So tonight we're going to have some fun, some, what did, what did I call it, mixed media, inky finger fun. Look at how fun this is. And whenever I was making this tag the first time, I was just in here playing around. I thought, oh, this would be a fun you stream. Uh, seriously, it looked like a hot mess until the very end. So, um, yeah, it's super fun. Look at that. Super gorgeous, super fun. Goodness. So we're going to use, I've pulled out some supplies here. We'll go through those while we wait for everyone to just um, sign in. Listen, guys, I am the queen of scraps. I, I am telling you right now, my idea of cleaning up is just make something. Just make something fabulous. And you know what? I really don't have a scrap pile because of that. And uh, I, I pride myself on using up my supplies. But what I like to do is when I'm trying out techniques or trying you know I heard Tim Holt say this the other day and I thought you know when I, we were at CHA and I thought this is fantastic uh, way of looking at this when I come into this room and and just play would I call it creative play I come in here with no agenda and I mean it looks like a hurricane blew through here when I'm done there is no project at the end. It's just playing with my mediums, playing with color palettes. It, it might be doodling. It might be just slap some paint onto something or play around with the stamp set that I just got. But there's no agenda to any of it. And, and I'm going to get up real quick and show you guys this. When I'm done, this is the kind of thing that I end up with right here. This huge pile of goodness you see this this is my scrap pile okay and it's it's really kind of simple this is texture and I just leave it in here all the time see I have these two little flowers I left them on the card so I'd know they were primas um, you know scraps of fabric die cut remnants that kind of stuff just little odds and end pieces these are all things that were say thrown up on my desk at the end of a project and I don't put them away they end up and inside this bucket I have these little little containers this is flowers um, and then this other container is mostly metal pieces and ephemera like see like a Apparently this was some scraps laying on my desk so I just cut them into little banners because you just never know when you might need a little banner. Little pieces of fiber, little pieces of chipboard, um, you know, see like this was a creative playtime. I just took some scrap and put it onto a wood balsa wood and then I never ended up doing anything with it. It just got thrown in here. But you know what? I don't sweat it because this guy will come to life one day and he'll get used on something I'm sure. Um, little pieces of metal I just don't even want to bother to go put them away I just throw them in here and then every now and then I'll sit down and I'll say okay this box is getting a little unruly so it's time to do something with it I always have a stack of tags in there uh, here's somewhere I was playing with my jelly plate look at how cute that is now I didn't end up using it at Christmas time but it could be a nice winter tag um, but I look at tags as ATC a ATCs where you know, I may not, I am I was playing with some techniques and some textures and just having some fun. And again, this is fun time. But then there are times where I come in here and I need a completed project. And I need to know in my heart that I have something at the very end to say that, um, hey, you completed something. You have something tangible to show for. So there's two different times that I'm in here. One is to make something that's tangible and one time is just to come in here and have a little bit of creative play so tonight's project is going to be based on uh, completing something that was started through creative play uh, learning to uh, play with some products um, maybe I just got some new stamps and I just wanted to come in here and begin um, you know playing with those stamps that's really what tonight's project was was me just playing with stamps these are all pieces of scrap that you guys will see I made a card out of one of these um, but I firmly believe that when I come in here to make cards or tags my objective is to I mean like look how cute and funny that is that's a ready-made card it's ready to go just put it on a card front right um, but I firmly believe that um, if I'm going to make a card or I'm going to make a tag, 
with every new product that I use, something old must be used. And that means I'm going to be reaching into that pile of goodness and pulling out something to go with it. So you'll notice on my tag, I have this eclectic pile of stuff going on here. Flowers that are mix matched, pieces of metal that were cut in half and maybe not used. Um, scrap paper. I went through all my scrap paper till I found a uh, saying that I really liked. So we're going to use that. So uh, my tags are really what I call my ATCs. And, and honestly, I know I'm repeating myself over and over again. I'm giving everybody a chance to come in. But um, it's really, a, it, it, my tags are really just free art. Just do what feels good. And if it ends up in the trash, it's no big deal. That's how I look at it because I'm learning how to use my mediums. I'm learning what goes with what. I'm learning um, techniques that are, are, you know, trying to find things with texture that are different than what I normally use. Um, you know, little things like that. So um, my tags are very free. Now I have people ask me all the time, what do you do with these tags? Well, some of you have um, gotten a rack from me. Uh, random act of kindness. I ask every person that I send a rack to not to videotape it and not to display it publicly. When I do something nice for someone, I want to do it nice for someone, not for publicity. So um, I'll send this, these, um, I'll send these off because it's a piece of my art. It's a piece of who I am. Um, I, I'm in the process of moving my studio right now, but I do have a huge wall. And whenever I receive a tag from someone, I hang it up on my wall. So it inspires me. Um, I like to share them that way. Whenever I just went to CHA and I shared some of these tags with some friends that I met along the way, um, it's just kind of my calling card. So that's what I do with them. Um, I've also used them as packaging. I've put um, things inside packaging and then maybe um, wrote the to and the from on the outside of them. So a lot of times at Christmas time, I'll make a really intricate tag and use it for the packaging and then they can either hang it on their Christmas tree or I don't know, toss it if they want to. But it's, it's just a fun way for me to use up the supplies that I have and have some creative play time. So how do I prep? How do I get started? Well, I've done a video on this before, but I always back all of my tags are backed with chipboard. Sometimes I do it at the end and sometimes I do it at the beginning. Um, Peggy, I am remodding you right now. So you're remodded. Uh, also, Amory, I think, is a moderator as well. Okay. Um, but I cut these tags out of manila cardstock and for prep, I just do this all at one time. I'll come in here and just cut a whole bunch. Sometimes I just cut them out of cardstock that's already been painted or whatever. You guys saw that in my bucket. I have these that were already cut down to to um, a tag size after I did my jelly printing on them. And so all I have to do is mount it straight onto a piece of chipboard and it's ready to build my base. So these become the bases of a lot of my... Um, tags. Okay, so enough about that. Let's go ahead and get started. Uh, for this particular tag, I really wanted to play with some of Lemoore's new uh, stamp sets. And these two are going to be our focus tonight. Uh, unfortunately, I do not have the original stamp or the stamps that are out. What I have are the uh, prototypes. So your tags are going to come, I mean, your stamps are going to come a little bit different than what you see them here. This is like what I would say my go-to mixed media circles. Uh, Lamour has done a fantastic job at um, creating these stamps. She's hand-drawn these. They're perfect. And you're going to get like an open circle and then texture to put inside of the circles. How fun are these? But the thing that I love about these is there's no edge because they're circles. So you can really use them on bigger scales as well. Isn't this gorgeous? And so these were put out by Indigo Blue and Lemore Weber Designs. Aren't they gorgeous? And like these are kind of like graffiti, grungy, 
grungy goodness. And I have a lot of boys running around here. So this is a really good go-to set for boys or masculine projects. Now this is what they look like. Now, with the exception of one thing, yours are probably going to come die cut if you purchase these. Mine were not die cut. Mine were still square because they were the prototype. So I've had to manually go in and cut them, but that's okay. But look at this. They're really deep ridged rubber. Awesome goodness. Okay. And you can tell these have been really well loved. And look, there's Lee Moore. So um, these are fantastic. And I think this set right here has 21 pieces in it. This is 21 pieces in this one set. Aren't those gorgeous? Okay, they're just starting to hit retailers. Lamora is going to put them up in her shop. Um, so keep checking her site too. And this is, uh, this is forever popular. I think this is just going to be one of those timeless sets, uh, especially for masculine layouts, but for anything grunge for sure or mixed media. And so you're going to get four stamps in this set. And this set is long. Like, um, where's my Timmy ruler? I think they're like seven and a half inches or something yeah seven and three quarter inches long so they're perfect for art journals seven look at that almost eight inches long perfect for art journals again you can see they're well loved now like i said i have the prototype so the packaging is going to be just a little bit different so we're going to use these tonight actually i'm going to use this one it has this one's so cool it has this um stitching on it and these squiggle lines isn't that cool looking and I don't clean my stamps, so this one's your favorite one. Um, I don't know. I thought so too until I started playing with these, and it's a toss-up. I uh, these both of these are luscious, so I think both of these are a must-have for any mixed media artist. The other things I've pulled out is, like I said, go through your stash of scrap papers. Okay, this has come from the hoard vault. I have had this in my stash for ever. Prima put out, oh, what, seven years ago, five, six, seven years ago, they put out this paper line. It's called Flights of Fancy. It was my all-time favorite, favorite, favorite paper line of all time ever. Like, if I could still buy it, I would still buy it in packs of 25, seriously. This paper, is it's got the Fruits of the Spirit written all over it. And you guys who know me, um, I am a big believer in scriptures in my scrapbook pages or my cards or my tags or whatever. I find so much inspiration from scriptures. So the fact that this had the fruit of the spirit on it, it just made this like my all time favorite paper line of all time. But the thing I like about it is it's, it's scripture, but it's not like stuffed shirt, um, um, religious do you see what i'm saying like it has some artistic goodness to it it has fun butterflies and just fun stuff included so i really liked it um it was one of my favorite papers of all time so uh ho hold on to that thought because there may be a, a, a quiz at the end <laughs> but anyway so the fruit of the spirit if for some reason you do not have this but you do want to uh, repeat some of this process the fruit of the spirit is found in um, Galatians 5 22 23 and they are love joy peace forbearance kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness and self-control did I forget anything please correct me if I did but the thing I like about this is you find this in almost every day of your walk of life. Love, joy, peace, you know, uh, kindness, goodness. So I really wanted to do a tag that uh, brought all of that up because the best way to hoard something is to use it on something that you want to keep for yourself. So that's what we're going to do today. So I'm going to use up pieces of this. And then I've pulled out these bubbles from Finabar. Absolutely love these. I love them because they have different shapes and to me they kind of reminded me of Boken lights or bubbles or also I was thinking that if you were in a field of flowers and you had something that you were holding in the foreground the background would become blurred and you would see this as poppies like way back in the background does that make sense have I lost everybody because my chat kind of froze is everybody chatting <laughs> So we're going to use this tonight and then of course I have also pulled out my gelatos and my uh, pit pens from Faber-Castell Design Memory Craft. Look at these amazing goodness. So we're going to learn some techniques with that and then I've also got some gel medium, whip spackle and gesso 
and I have some just standard craft black paint and white paint and I've also pulled out um, Lindy Stamp Gang Creme Brulee. You can use whatever color you wish. Um, and then I have some cheesecloth. This is great for texture. Um, stamp pad. I just have some random flowers. These all came from the bucket. Some metal pieces. And I don't want to pull all this out, but you guys can see that down in there. Um, some buttons for the center of my flowers. These are from Graphic 45. I've not used them ever. And then a little wood veneer pieces, a little wood veneer frame, some Liquitex gold, and then the star of tonight's show, uh, along with the gelatos, is the patinaed Ranger uh, vintage, vintage uh, alcohol inks. So this color is called... What is this color? Uh, Verdigris, Verdigris, and it's a blue color. And then this one is jade, and it's got a. They have like a milky white pigment in them as well as the alcohol base. And then I'm gonna color up my flowers with this. This is alcohol ink. It's shell pink. So there's our supplies for tonight. Now I did use the flitter, the flitter box from Indigo Blue. Uh, on a project this weekend. So these little mica flakes are captured here that these were the ones that didn't come out to go in the box. So I've stored them here because I think I might use a few pieces here and there on my tag just to use these up so they don't get lost. Um, and then I'll reuse this container. Okay, so let's get started with our with our tag. Um, I've done a video in the past to show how to do the tags, but I just cut them out of the Tim Holtz tag and book plate die. And I cut, I mount the uh, manila cardstock onto the chipboard and then I die cut it. And I just put a, a coat of uh, gel medium on, put the tag down. Then when, once the tags are cut, I cover them again with matte medium on the top. So they're already prepped, ready to go. I don't have to worry about any of that. So I'm going to put this guy to the side. We don't need him. So is everybody with me? Road trip to Tanya's. <laughs> Come on down. It's warm here too. For now, anyway, next week that that's subject to change in Florida on a given any given moment's notice. <laughs> so, for my background, like I said, my original idea was the field of poppies and fun. You're not really going to see too much of this color, but I think it's uh, fun to uh, go ahead and add it. Uh, one thing Diane Revely said that kind of stuck with me and resonated with me was don't fall in love with your background because it is a background and it's intended to stay in the background. So tonight I'm going to start off with my gelatos. This is the snow cone double scoop gelato and I'm just going to liberally apply this. Remember this tag has been prepped with gel, with, um, gel medium. So I'm just going to add a little bit here. Now you don't have to use gel medium to prep your surface with the gelatos, but it does help them to move around a little easier if the, if the surface is prepped. And then I'm also going to use this green tea double scoop gelato. So I'm going to add that down here at the bottom. And a lot of this, like I said before, you're not going to see it. And that's okay if you don't. Uh, we just need a base to build on. And then I'm just going to take a moistened baby wipe. I've had this out for a while because I didn't want it to be soppy wet. And I'm just going to use that baby wipe to work that pigment in. And I'm very gently rubbing. The more you rub, the harder, the harder you rub, the more you're going to rub it off. Um, this color just needs to be on the tag so that you don't see the manila cardstock. You're really not going to see a whole lot of this when we're done. But... That's going to be my base. Now, I've kind of pulled some of this pigment off because it's really light. So I'm just going to add a little bit more in. And this time, just use my finger because my tag surface is already moistened. So I'm just going to work that in really well. And don't worry if you've got like these streaks up here where the maybe the um, it's a little darker where the gel medium did not cover the tag completely. That's okay. Don't sweat that kind of stuff. You're not going to notice it when we're done. So I'm just going to work that in really good. So we have us a good, nice base coat for our field. So next what I want to do is I am going to create 
and I need to do this in something else to trap it. So this is another tip that I have. I keep, these are the clear plastic blister packs that you get from all of your good scrapbook materials. Um, I keep those under my desk in a little bucket and then whenever I get ready to mix up mediums and things like that, I use them for palettes. So I have the little spatula here. I'm just gonna break off a little bit of this gelato. I don't need a whole lot for this, uh, just a little. And I am going to break it up. Now to break it up, the easiest way to break it up is, now you can use your glimmer sprays like your Lindy Stamp Gang if you want to give it a little shimmer, but I'm not gonna worry about that tonight. And then I just have a little thing of water here. So I'm just gonna spritz it with some water just to soften up that pigment. Now for those of you who are new to the gelato world, gelatos are highly concentrated pigment sticks. So when you uh, add water to them, it dilutes them down. And when you um, add gesso to them, you can change the look. By adding them to mediums, you can tint your mediums to be whatever color you want. So they're very versatile. And of course, I love that they're small. Um, they're highly concentrated, so a little bit goes a long way. So what I've done now is by adding this water, I'm just breaking this pigment up and getting it smooth. And, and, and it's more acrylic. Um, liquid format. This is not acrylic. I shouldn't have said that. It's more of a water based, watercolor based pigment. But it's highly concentrated and it has a lot of the little um, the wax, the wax that's in there. You need to break it up and really just uh, get it good and liquefied and just really like when you're when you're baking a cake and you need to um, you need to like mix the cake until all the lumps are out. That's kind of what you're doing here is you're mixing all that pigment up and getting it, um, getting all those lumps out before you add it to your mediums. Now I'm just going to take and wipe off my spatula here. Um, and then I'm going to dip out some of this whip spackle. Now whip spackle is like modeling paste, but it has a little different consistency to it. And I don't need a whole lot, so I'm just going to pull out a little bit. And I also keep a stash of popsicle sticks handy. And I don't want to do this on my tag. Get that out of the way. Um, and all I'm going to do is mix this into this whip spackle. Now the whip spackle is white. It's a white creamy consistency. So when I add it to this rich hot pink, it's going to turn a lighter shade of pink because it's picking up the white from the whip spackle. But look at how this is just such yummy frosting consistency. Like don't eat it. I mean, it, it might look like it tastes good, but it really doesn't. But look at how cool this is. Isn't it gorgeous? It's like bubble gum. That's what I would call this color. It's like a bubble gum. Isn't that gorgeous? Love it. Love it. Okay. So <laughs> enough of that. Nobody wants to hear me sing. Okay. So back to our tag. And it doesn't have to be dry. We're, we're going to just keep moving on. Now I want to find an interesting placement for my little circles. And I, like I said before, I don't need a whole lot of pigment on here. But I know I want some of these circles to kind of go off the edge a little bit. Um, and, I, and I definitely want to see some of these smaller ones with the larger ones. So I'm going to pay attention to where my stencil is, is being laid down. I'm going to hold it down really good and I'm going to push the pigment up, up the tag like this. Does anybody have any questions? How many of you have used gelatos before? And I had a little bit too much moisture in my um, in my pigment whenever I was um, diluting it down to to break up the pigment. So it's a little bit my um, whip spackle is a little bit runny. Now you do want to make sure you clean your stencil really well before you. Um, forget about it and you ruin it because I've done that so many times. Let me just clean that up right there. I'm just going to add a little bit there. I think I'm good with that. Look at that. Isn't it pretty? 
You love your gelatos, you just need more of them. I agree, you can't have too many of those. So I'm gonna put that to the side. And now I'm gonna show you how to clean your stencil really quick if you're sitting at your desk. Now I recommend afterwards going over to the sink when you get up, go to the sink and clean your stencils and your utensils really well. But I'm going to scrape that back into my palette because I may use it later. I'm going to put my tag off over here to the side to dry for just a minute and we're going to clean this up. Now normally I would tell you to just take a baby wipe and wipe this stuff up but here's the thing we're we're playing in creative play world right now right so I have a tag here let's use what we have on this tag and all I'm going to do is take it and lay it down. I flipped it upside down so that the area that I was scraping before is on top. So I'm going to get the negative of the stencil. And then I'm just going to start wiping off the top. Now, it may not look like much and it might look like I'm just trying to be overly frugal and maybe I am. But now I have the makings of the start of the next tag that you guys will see in Creative Play World. Look at that. How gorgeous is that? So maybe sometime this week I'll do a um, YouTube of me using this piece. Okay, so nothing gets wasted in this room. Nothing, ever. That's why it's overgrown with stuff everywhere. So how fun is that? So we use that up and, and we're going to get to um, play with that later on this week too. And it's such a fun way to use the stencil because this stencil is really a fun stencil. Okay, so I'm going to just take this and finish wiping that up and getting it good and clean. Again, spritz it with the water. And then I've got some paper towels over here. I'll just wipe this up for now just to move on. Now, if you are a jelly plate person, this would have been fun to do with your jelly plate too. Does anybody have any questions? All right, we're going to put those away. Because we're not going to need those again for a little while. We don't. Um, now, while my tag is drying, let's talk about my um, little wooden piece. Because I don't like to run my heat gun if I don't need to. So, um, let's talk about our little wooden pieces. We have a couple of things here. This is just a tag I got at Michael's. Dollar bin, I think. And I want to, this is wood and it's not treated. There is no gesso or gel medium. So I'm going to show you how to take the same exact gelatos. This one is called Red Cherry. And this time I'm just going to go straight onto this tag or onto this wood with this gelato. And look at how smooth and creamy and goodness this is. Look, look at how fun that is. Look at the rich pigment that we have there. And again, I'm just going to take my baby wipe. I, ha I swear to you, I have bought more baby wipes since I started mixed media than I ever did whenever my children were small. Make sure you're closing up your mediums too when you're done with them so they don't dry out. So I'm just going to take a baby wipe. I don't want this to be saturated because I want to maintain that rich, vibrant coloring, okay? But I'm going to take this baby wipe and very gently rub that pigment into the wood. And look at how gorgeous gorgeous this is it's so vibrant look at that look at how gorgeous that is and look at how easily it colored isn't it gorgeous now I'm gonna put that to the side for just a few minutes and let's talk about our butterfly for a second um, yes, I create like this all the time. It's total ADHD world. Um, I don't like to heat the, hear that heat gun, and I don't, I don't, I like to try and avoid it as much as possible. So, I usually work in stages like this. Okay, so all my tools are cleaned up. Now I'm going to come back with this. Um, what color do I want to use? Let's go with our alcohol inks on this one. Okay, so I have this blue, which is gorgeous, and I'm just going to do a few little drops of this here and there. Look at how, look at how that is. It is just going to soak into that 
wood veneer. And then I'm going to take this Liquitex paint and smear it over the top and some spots. Now I really just want this to um, kind of soak into the wood. I don't want to overdo it because if you overdo it what's going to happen is you're going to end up with mud because that's yellow. It actually going to end up with green because it's a blue and a, and a um, gold that's mixed together. But I'm just taking this baby wipe and dabbing that around. And look at how beautiful that butterfly is. Look at that. Isn't it gorgeous? This pops of gold everywhere. Now we're gonna we're gonna continue on and play with him a little bit more, but he needs to dry before we go any further with him. So we're gonna put him to the side. And let's see if our tag is um, good and dry yet. It's, it's still going to require a little bit of a heat gun, so I'm going to hit that. Does anybody have any questions while I'm doing this? Do you guys like to make tags? I mean, it's the same as an ATG. It just gives you a little bit... I mean, ATG. Artist Trading Car, ATC, not ATG. ATG is a glue gun, right? <laughs> it, it You know, it just gives you an opportunity to... Um, <sighs> to to just play, but it's a bigger surface than an ATC. You don't hear it? Really? Good. That's a good thing. I don't like to listen to it. <laughs> They're just so fun, and you know what? If you keep them light... You can uh, put them on the front of cards or use them as an embellishment cluster on a scrapbook page. Okay, so for this next step, I really, because I'm going to pull, see how that's still wet and it lifted up. That's okay. That's just found texture. That's what I call that, found texture. All right. We'll move on to our butterfly because it should be fairly dry because it was actually a um, alcohol ink. So it dried pretty fast. Um, and then I'm going to dry this really fast too while I'm at it. Okay, so this guy needs a little more time to cure. I think that modeling or that whip spackle is just not drying as fast as I would like. But that's okay. We don't we don't need him right now. Now let's go to Lamar stamps because they're so fun, right? Um, I'm gonna go with the circles, and I think what I want is this one up here that has a lot of text on it. And the reason I pulled these circles out is because look at this. Um, so this is a bunch of text. You see that? Is it gorgeous? Um, I pulled this out because I think it's roughly the same size as my um, circles from this die cut. So um, it's going to really offer some fun texture. Now, anyone who's followed Lamore, uh, you know, pit pens are amazing. They're like little ink pads all into a pen. So they're made with India ink and they go on wet on a prep surface they stay wet long enough to blend but then when you add them to um, a non-prep surface they go on like a marker so and then even with the prep surface they when they dry they dry permanent so they're a permanent permanent fixture so what I'm going to do is this is the uh, cold gray 233 um, so I like it because it's black, but it's not black. It's not like that harsh black color. So I'm going to just color right on top of my little text circle stamp here. This is the Lee Moore Weber circles. So for those of you who are just joining us, these are made by Indigo Blue, and they just released CHA 2015. So check your local retailers. I think Lemore is having them in the store. I know Simon Says Stamp just put them out. So they're available. Um, and then because this is a circle, it's never ending or stopping. Uh, we can just stamp right on top of that butterfly, give him a little bit of texture and some texting goodness. Look at that. How cute is he? 
and he adorb and now he has some cool texture oh my goodness I cannot leave the I took these to CHA with me because they're so they're so portable I mean seriously I, and look at how many ink pads I had in that just that one tub <laughs> Okay, so there's that, and I also want to add some of this to my to my um, frame here because it needs a little texturing love as well. And basically, all we're doing here is building out texture on all of our pieces, and I don't want them everywhere. And notice, I'm going with third, fourth, fifth, eighth, ninth, tenth generation of the stamping because I don't necessarily need it to read it completely I just need to be able to see that there's a layer there okay so this is creative play and it's just get in there and and um, adding a little bit of texture and depth to something I don't even know if you guys can see it can you see it you only have four colors of the uh, Stampers Big Brush Artist pens Oops, I need to throw that away and get another one. So I usually just take a baby wipe at the end and just wipe down my stamps. Uh, it doesn't get all of the ink residue off, but it does kind of help to keep them a little bit cleaner. Sometimes I just say, I don't care. Okay, so that's done. Now let's see if this is dry enough to stamp on. Not quite. I'm telling you, this tag is going to look like a hot mess, and then all of a sudden it's going to come to life, and you guys are going to go, wow, I never would have thought that. And I think that's a lesson in faith, is just keep working at it. If you don't like it with mixed media, there are no rules. So if you don't like it, just keep adding another layer to it until you do like it, and then eventually it works. <laughs> Faber calls them uh, Stampers Big Brush Artist Pens, or Faber calls them Pit Pens. Um, Design Memory Craft calls them Stampers Big Brush Artist Pens. They're the same pens. Um, I think the Faber side, I think the um, there was something to do with the tips. I'm not sure. It's the same tip, but I want to say that the artist grade ones, um, the ones over on the Faber side, there's something about the tips can be removed or something. I don't think they sell refills, but they do, I think, sell replacement tips or something. Um, but don't hold me to that. I can't. I think I heard that a long time ago. But that's on the uh, Faber side. And not all the colors are in the Stampers Big Brush Artist set. So, um... I like the Stampers Big Brush Artist is if you're building your collection because they usually come in sets of three. So you can really get in there and, um, you know, you can buy three markers at one time. But you know the three markers you buy will always match. So that's really a good, good tip there. Okay. So all I'm doing is, again, just adding ink. And then I'm going to come back over some of these bubbles and just stamp them on there. Don't worry if you stamp off the bubble. Um, it's not a big deal. Let it go. Let it go. Um, you're really just looking for some good texture here. You're not going to see a whole lot of this anyway. Um, but look at how that's just adding another layer of depth there to those. And I love how her circles just fit inside these circles. I am the enabler, honey. Don't hang out with me. You'll go broke. But you know what? I don't drink. I don't smoke. So... These are my weaknesses. <laughs> so we're going to come back with this one and add a little bit more in here. Um, again, I'm just going to kind of come up with the stitching. Just add a few spots here and there just to give another little bit of texture across my tag. Uh, you're not going to see a whole lot of it, and that's okay if you don't. Not a big deal. But look at how now my tag is starting to really get the texture added to it. Isn't that fun? Okay. Now it's time to add a little bit of shading. I'm going to come back in with the Pink Matter Lake 129. And I'm going to come in around these circles and just, because it's a prep surface, 
uh, I'm just going to take and rub my finger very lightly and it's going to add a little bit of depth and shading to this circle. Isn't that gorgeous? Well, I don't need to do it to all of them. Like I said, you're not going to see a whole lot. This frame's going to cover up most of it. Um, I'm just trying to add a little bit of texture here. Now, another tip, I don't, you guys can't see it, but I can feel it. Uh, on this uh, whip spackle, because it wasn't completely dry when I pressed the stamp into it, I now, whenever I look, I don't know if you can guys can see it or not, but it left the stamped impression in here like a deboss on these. I don't know if you guys can see that texture, but it left like a deboss on these um, circles. So that's kind of cool. That's a bonus. Again, it was only because I did that while it was wet. If I had waited till it was dry, you wouldn't see it. Now my frame is going to cover up all of the circles that are right here. So there's no point in me doing a whole lot of the shading on all of them. But I'll do a few. And then I'm not going to be able to see any of these down here in the bottom really. Other than maybe this one. And it's not a complete coverage. So... Since I didn't get the whip spackle all the way to the edge there, I can really come in here and you guys can see how that shading works. Isn't that cool? And like I said, you're not really going to see a whole lot of this down here because we're going to have flower arrangement and all that goodness down here. I really want to focus up with the ones that are going to be over in this area. And look at how easily they just shade out. And look at the difference between, I'm going to hold this up so you guys can really see it, but look at the difference between the ones I did and the ones I didn't do. Isn't that cool? Okay, next we're going to move it on up. All right, now I want to get some really darker colors around the edges. And um, I think that's where this gray is going to come in. I think I'm just going to kind of come over here and darken this edge up. I love for my tags to have really dark edges because I think what it does is it sends your eye back to the center point, almost like the center is my highlight. So it's like in a spotlight. So I love, you'll see most of my tags that I do have really dark edges. Isn't that cool? And since this is a gray, it's just making... Um, making the edges just a little darker it's not it's not that harsh black we'll come back with the black later as a finishing touch but for now this is just kind of grunging it up a little bit making it not look so perfect and pristine just giving it a little bit more depth and see how now your eye goes from the edge to the to the center because their light is all right here and it really helps you, you see what I mean by it's a hot mess? It's a hot mess right now because nothing is dry and I'm not letting anything dry before I move on. So my butterfly needs a little bit of depth as well. So I'm going to start out by putting a little center on him. And then I'm going to come around the edges of this butterfly really good. I might have to come back with the black ink on him because I really want him to pop. But we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Oh, you hear Boo barking? Daddy must be home. Yeah, this is just not quite dark enough. I'm, I'm not liking that. So, no harm, no foul. I'll just go in here and grab a darker one. This is the Cold Gray 235. It's just a shade darker. And it, it's black without being black again. And it really pops. See how my butterfly is really just kind of taking notice here now Lamore has some other stamps as well she has the um, splattered butterfly and the splattered heart you guys are going to see those they're going to be super popular she has this eye stamp um, really great stamps they're very unique and very different well, I guess that's what unique means isn't it okay so I'm really liking that now let's come back with um, Oh, let's see here. Let's put him to the side and let's work on our frame for just a minute because I really want to get some good, uh, this needs to dry before I go on or I'm going to make a hot mess out of it. So let's work on our frame. Uh, I really want to give it that ultra shiny goodness. Um, so I'm going to take a um, coffee filter. 
and pull that out because we're going to do a lot of embossing here. Okay, so I want to add some more texture to this. I really want to see a little bit more uh, uh, other colors. So I'm going to take this alcohol ink. This is the blue again, and I'm just going to kind of let me just put a dab here on my mat. I was going to splatter it, but I decided better against that. And then I'm going to take this Liquitex paint, and I'm not going to mix them together. I'm just going to drop them separate. Taking a baby wipe, and I'm just going to blot them up. Okay? And then I'm going to just kind of blot randomly around my frame. And I may need a little more gold, but that's okay. But I'm just... I'm not I'm not trying to cover the whole thing I just want some pops of color here and there see it and then I may I need a little bit more of this gold I think and when we go through the next step it's really going to get intense so um, don't worry if you're not seeing a whole lot if it's if it's not popping yet because it will when we're finished I promise but what we're doing is we're building um, kind of a, a painted texture. It's going to have that uh, that sort of um, old world. I, I think of it like if I was in Mexico and I found this uh, frame that had um, a lot of those rich colored tones but maybe has been painted 27 times and each time a different color and the paints peeled back and it's just really good texture. That's what we're going for here. So the alcohol ink, because it has a pigment in it, it's a little more opaque. So I'm keeping this, this true color. It's not, it's not blending with the red. So it's staying, it's staying that nice blue rich pop of color. You see that? Isn't that cool? So now what we're going to do, so I'm going to let that dry, pick this paint up and, and it's going to stay moist on this paper towel for a while. Cause this is a baby wipe. So, we should be able to use it again. Now this is alcohol ink, so it should dry pretty fast, but I want it to be good and dry before I go to the next step. And I'm gonna pull out my Versa ink, and I am going to hit that really well with the Versa ink. And I wanna make sure I get all of those edges really good. And my Versa ink is a nightmare, but I use this one only for mixed media, so I really don't care. Um, and then I'm going to take this coffee filter and my UD. This is ultra thick embossing enamel. This one is made by Ranger. There's some other companies that make others, but I like the Ranger version. And I'm going to cover this completely with the UD. Does anybody have any questions so far? Now, I am going to use my tweezers for this couple reasons one I don't want to I don't want to knock the UD off and get it all over the place so by picking it up with the tweezers um, I'm, I'm minimizing the exposure because my fingers would lift that UD up off now I have to use my this other heat gun because it's it's louder but it's faster does anybody have any questions we lost Anne Marie what happened it's past her bedtime. Does she get booted? Now, the first time we UD this, it is going to be a hot mess. You're only going to get like this wet look. And it's a really cool texture. With mixed media, it's all about texture anyway. So it's a really, really cool texture. But it's not the texture I'm after. So I am going to do this again. Now some people will say just dip it back in the UD and do it again. But I'm not. I'm going to let that cool for just a second. And I'm going to hit it one more time with this. Because this was wood and it just, I don't know. The, the UD kind of dries pretty fast on here. And it cools off pretty fast. So I just like to do the Versa ink one more time. And then now we're going to add our second layer. And you want to do this a couple of times. Just a couple of layers. Okay. Now, does anybody have any questions while I'm doing this? Okay. 
You know, I love UD2, and here's the thing. I forget about it. Do you guys forget about it? Like, I was UDing everything for the longest time, and then all of a sudden, I just, I forgot about it. Oh, here's another tip for you. If you have one of these um, cutting mats, don't heat on top of it, because it'll warp it. But now look at how our frame has got that nice glossy look to it. It needs a little more UD. I'm going to just do this. Remember, it's mixed media. It's all about the texture. That's really what we're after with this, is texture. We want some glossy things. We want some, um, we want some, um, different types of textures. And I just keep dipping it in. If it needs a little more, because this is an uneven surface, so um, all these little spindles that are kicking out here, they're not really holding the UD too well. So I'm just re-dipping. I'm getting it hot, so it's like molten lava, so that the uncrystallized um, UD will just adhere to it. Look at how fun this is. OMG, it's so gorgeous. So gorgeous. It's like lacquer. Love it. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who has the prettiest tag of all? <laughs> okay, now I have a hot mess going on over here. So let's put this to the side for just a second. Let it, let it cool off and clean up. Do some housekeeping. Does anybody have any questions? Now, you might ask, why did you not UD up your butterfly? And I could, I definitely could, but like I said, I want texture here. And one of the fruits of the Spirit is self-control. And, and when I say that, I mean that in the funnest of ways. But if I UD'd everything on the tag, it wouldn't, it wouldn't look good because I wouldn't have multiple textures. So that's what... We're going to exercise some self-control, and we're going to just say enough and move on. Now, I want to show you this tip. Okay, you see how my mat is started to buckle because of the heat? I don't know if you guys can see it or not, but there's like this big hump here, like it's got a humpback whale. If I take my hands and I press it, it's warm, so be careful. But if I take my hands and I press it while it's hot, it'll flatten back out again. Did you guys know that? Yes, Peggy can have all the blizzards she wants. Okay, so see, now it's all flat again. Now, I do want a little more shimmer on this little guy because he is just a little bit too flat. But I don't know if I want the UD on there. So, um, I may think about this for just a second. But I, I think what would be fun is to put some of these little mica flakes on him, wouldn't it? So, I'm just going to come in here with my gel medium. And I happen to have... A little uh, sponge that has a little bit of gel medium on it. I'm just going to pick up a little bit and I'm just going to uh, want, well, what I should do is just go ahead and seal him up. He, everything that's on him is permanent, but that will help a little bit, I think, seal him and give him a nice texture. Um, but while he's got all of this gel medium on him, um, maybe pick up a couple of pieces of this flakes and just drop them right there. Now look at him. He's going to be so pretty. He's got a little jewelry on him. And we're not wasting this. Um, how fun is this? I love this stuff. It's a mess. Oh my goodness, it's a mess. But I love it. 
Okay, there's that. Now we need just a little bit more of that goldish tone. This color came with the flitter box kit, and I think it's called Winter's Winter Dawn or Winter Dawn. Don't overdo it. Self control. That's what this tag is about, right? It's about the fruit of the spirit. One of them is self control. So we're going to exercise some control and stop. Um, and then I'm going to put this away and use it on something else another day. Okay, let's go back to our tag and let's start building out our layers. So this is what our tag looks like and we're getting there. Um, our tag over here is dried up. Let's take while we have this gel medium out, let's go ahead and apply some gel medium over the top of our tag just to seal it really good. Does anybody have any questions so far? Did anybody watch the Super Bowl? What was your favorite commercial from the Super Bowl if you watched it? I think mine, my favorite one, after really thinking about it, was the cyberbullying from Coca-Cola and just spreading love. Love and kindness. That's what this tag is about, kindness. Spreading kindness. You know, kindness is free. We should spread more of it. Okay, so this is just a piece of that cheesecloth. You see it? It was dyed with some, I picked up some Lindy Stamp Gang that was on my mat and just picked it up with that so it's nice and colored so I'm ready to go with it whenever and again mixed media is about texture and you know what this has got some fun texture going on here look at this and it's okay if it's not completely adhered down if it's ruffled up and curled up and it and the edges are frayed and up lifted a little bit I think that just adds to it look at how fun that is See the see that it's about texture and depth. So we're going to cover our gel medium. We don't need that right now. And then I am going to take my frame and it's going to go about right there. But before I put it down, I need to uh, go ahead and add my um, fruit of the spirit in there. So I'm going to pull this out. Now this is just a little bit too bright for me. So I'm going to take a little gesso. I'm going to find the area that I want, which I really love that I can see in here uh, gentleness and you don't need to see the whole word love to know it's love, right? But I like if I do it here, I can see love, um, slow tempered, gentleness joy peace I can kind of see them all right here and you know what this is a piece of scrap paper so I don't need to be conservative with it I really want that right there so this is what I'm gonna do I'm gonna take a pin and very lightly just kind of trace the inside so I know where it is and I can see it you guys probably can't see it but I can see it let me do it one more time because I missed an area down here where I couldn't. Okay. Probably should have done that with a pencil, not a pen. But that's okay. We're going to go with it because that's what we do. And I'm going to stay to the outside of that circle that I just um, freehanded because I need to fix it to my frame. And we're going to do a little bit of finger paint in here put that to the side because we don't need it anymore so we're gonna take our frame and I've got a little tiny bit of gesso here I'm just gonna like dab it up put it off to the side because I'm gonna use some of it on my flowers so um, and I'm gonna just dry brush that right over the top of that frame now I am lifting this color off too with my fingers I'm gonna just lift it off because I want it to be lighter but I don't necessarily need it to be like um, I don't you it just lightened it up here I'll pull it out so you can see a contrast it's there but it's kind of a little more toned down okay that's called a whitewash 
and I'm just going to pick that up off of there so I don't get anything on my tag. I'm trying to keep my surface clean. Anybody got any questions? You got booted. Did you get back? Are you modded? Oh, she's modded. Okay, thank you, Peggy, for modding Anne Marie back. Welcome back, Anne Marie. Okay, so now let's get this guy um, prepped. Let's get him a little bit of pink so we can pull in some of that pink from below. So I'm going to take that um, pink Matter Lake 129 and I'm going to go really dark around the edges. But because this is prepped now, because I gessoed it, uh, this India ink will actually blend. And so we're going to continue our circle theme by just coloring that in. And I'm going to take this uh, baby wipe here and just really work that pigment around so I don't see any of those harsh lines. Now I have some shading going on. Super fun. We're almost done, believe it or not. Once this thing comes together, it's going to be done in no time. Okay, so I'm going to take a little bit of this gel medium and... I'm going to paint the back of this. Um, I'm going to be kind of liberal with it, actually. I don't care if it seeps down into those holes because it's going to dry clear anyway. Uh, and we're going to fill it with flowers and stuff like that anyway. And I really want this to adhere really well to my um, tag. So I'm going to be very liberal with it. Whoops. And I want to make sure I get this... Well, and I want to make sure you're going in the right direction with your text. Okay, so this is the up. So make sure that when you do this, that... Okay. Now, my tag. I want this to hang off the side just a little bit. Like I said, don't worry too much about the overspill of the matte medium. It will dry clear. But I do want to be very liberal with it on the back of this tack uh, frame because I don't want it to come up. And hot glue doesn't stick to f wood very well. I mean, we could get it to temporarily stick to just hold it in place, but we want this to be bonded for life. So we're going to put that down and then stick this right over the top. Just like that. Lovely. Okay. Now I'm going to hold that down for just a few minutes. Just so it can bond. And again, just take take this gel medium and seal over the top of the inside of that. Just give it a good once over. Uh, don't worry about the UD getting the gel medium on it. Because... Um, we can wipe it up. It's not a big deal. It'll still have its luster and shine. Uh, we just really need this to stick. Now, because I need it to stick now, because I don't have all night to wait on it, I am going to take and put a little bit of hot glue right down there in the bottom until it bonds. And the glue is a temporary solution because the matte medium is really what's going to bond it. Okay, but for, for the purposes of tonight's viewing pleasure, I need it to kind of stick now. I, I can't wait for it. Normally, I would probably take this and put something heavy on it and move on to something else. So are you guys liking this so far? There's a lot of detail in these things, you know. Um... Really, I mean, look at how fun that is. It's so bright and vibrant, right? So that's where we are. I mean, if I wanted to stop right now, it still would be super cool, don't you think? Now, but who, there's no fun in that. So I'm going to take a little bit of this gesso, and I'm just going to kind of dry brush it right over the top of all of this in the back because I kind of want to send it to the background a little bit. I don't want it on my frame, so I'm going to be very careful there with my frame. But I do want to kind of mute some of this down that's going on in the background especially um, it kind of brings out the texture in the cheesecloth a little bit when you just kind of dry brush over it 
like I said, don't worry about the bottom so much because you're going to have flower arrangement on there. This just does not want to stick. We don't have time for this now. Okay, so now let's move on to our flowers. I have um, a couple of different flowers here. And this is where it's going to get fun and we're almost done, guys. Just hang with me just a little bit longer. I'm going to pull all of my pieces out so I have them all sitting right here. Okay. So I have these flowers. These are Prima flowers that I buy in bulk. Um, and they have these uh, vines on them, which is fine. What do I, I need a leaf, too. Um, I'm going to start out by just placing a leaf, like, right in here. Oop, I got two of them. I'm going to place one of them right in here, and that's going to serve as my base. I think if any time you have flowers, you really need to have a leaf because it really looks weird to just have random flowers just sitting there. But I'm also noticing I'm going to scrunch them up just a little bit so they have some texture. And then I'm going to come back with this white paint, and I'm going to kind of dry brush over the top. Don't worry about that. We're not even going to see it. Okay. That's going to give, that's going to kind of send them back to the background and tone them down a little bit, but it's going to help also for my mediums to stick to this mulberry without seeping all the way through. Okay, so now I want to take one of these and put it here. And again, even though this is white, I'm going to hit it with this um, gesso just a bit because the gesso is going to seal the... the um, mulberry paper so it does it it's does what I want it to do in a few minutes because I really want this to be good now directly across from that and I'm opening these flowers up don't be afraid to alter your prima flowers they're perfect I know they're perfect but it's okay to destroy them prima actually likes it when you do that look at their design team they all destroy their flowers they open them up and they smash them around and they recolor them and make them good now the cool thing is is on this tag that I did none of these flowers matched one of them was brown one of them was pink and it's okay it's okay just use them so I'm going to start out with one of these here see how what I meant about don't worry so much about getting caught up on everything being exactly perfect because you know what it probably won't be exactly perfect and that's okay I might want this one to come down this way. Um, and, and at this point, we're just building out a flower arrangement. So I would do this with matte medium usually if I'm working in um, my studio uh, without trying to do a show. But because this has got to dry so fast, I'm going to use some hot glue and just get it to stay down. Um, again, just putting that matte medium on there. I mean that gel media, uh, gesso on there. You can't see it now because they're all white flowers, but you will see it before it's over. Now, notice what I just did. I just took the center of that flower and I just pinched it up and it just kind of pulled it up. And again, just hit it with that gesso, tone it down just a little bit. Um, before I get too crazy, we've got Butterfly Guy over here. So let's go ahead and add him in before I lose my my placing for him and again hot glue really doesn't stick very well to um, wood so you really need to use gel medium okay now I need did I lose a flower what happened to my other flower oh there it is it flew the coop Okay, so I'm going to take this one, and notice that I'm not being too fussy about it, um, some of this stuff, because you're gonna, you're covering it up, so you just, you just want texture and depth, depth of field. Now look at how pretty that is, and, it, and we haven't even done anything yet. Now I have these, and you know what, they might be a bit big, but I do like their tone. I wish I had, um put them on before Mike can do it with this one see there are no uh oh's in scrapbooking these are just embellishment opportunities right 
So I'm going to just take, poke those through and bend these back and then glue it right back down again. I'm being super liberal with the glue. Okay, let's see if I can't. Okay, this is another tip for you guys. Don't just keep pulling at it. Hit it with the heat gun or the heat tool and they should lift up all if you used hot glue. If you use gel medium, you'd still be able to lift them anyway. No flowers were ruined in the making of this video. So we're going to dip. Go in, go in, go in. Yay. Okay. These brads might be a little too big, but it's okay. I have had these in my stash forever, so they need to be used. Okay. Liberal with that. Very liberal with that glue. Okay. Now, this kind of guy right here, most people would throw him away. No, no, no. Don't throw him away. We need him. So we're just going to pull and tug because I really think we need to bring those metal elements up. So I want to have one laying right there. So I'm going to add glue here and then back again here. Now, since I'm using hot glue on this particular tag, what I will do is overnight, I will come back and tuck some um, glossy accents back up in these areas or some E6000, and that's going to help it to bond for life, and I won't have to worry about the hot glue. Then I have this flower. I want to, if I do one thing, I need to have three things. So um, I've got the one down here, and I really wanted another one like right back here behind the butterfly. Just like that. That'd probably stick without me even putting any glue on it. But let's reinforce it a little bit. Are you guys still hanging with me? We are almost done. Okay, pull that out just a little bit. And then I think I want one right over here. Because, you know, we don't want, we're don't. we taking away from that pile of goodness that we had at the beginning of the show. We don't need to add to it, right? So all of these elements need to be used up before the show is over. So there we go. Now look at how, that's just gorgeous right now and we haven't even done anything to it yet, isn't it? Absolutely gorgeous. Okay, so now let's start adding in our fun stuff. Okay, we've got this one little gear because he was, again, just left in here in the pile. I'm going to tuck him underneath that so he just sort of finishes off that cluster look at that yay everybody's still here okay I'm gonna cover up this gel medium now let's uh, take a little bit more of this gesso and paint over our little brass pieces and again this is just gonna give them a little tooth so that when we start spritzing this um, alcohol ink around um, everything is going to absorb really well this alcohol ink and this fun this is the best part like this is the super fun part okay so I'm gonna start out with this color I always like to start with my darkest color and then put my lighter color on top um, or excuse me I said that backwards let's start with the lighter color and then go with the darker color where's the lighter color I want my I want my roses to be pink so before I drop this alcohol ink in them because if you hit this mulberry paper with this alcohol ink it's gonna just bleed I've got some alcohol here I'm gonna saturate this mulberry paper these um flowers really well with alcohol and then I'm going to start dripping, but I'm going to drip from the center like this and just, you know, blot it in there. Then while it's still wet and you got to move quick because alcohol dries pretty fast. That's why we spritzed it with alcohol first. Um, while it's still wet, I'm going to come back with my creme brulee from Lindy Stamp Gang and this is going to give them shine. 
This is a neutral color. I didn't have a pink that was a good pink. So this was a way I could add that shimmer to them um, without compromising the pink quality. Now you don't want to heat this with a heat gun because alcohol burns without a flame if I remember correctly from chemistry. So you want to be very careful. These are chemicals. You want to be very careful. Okay, so now I have this patina and I'm going to drop a few drops of that right there on top. Just like that. And I want some of it on my little metal pieces down here and over here. Back over here and back over here. Um, and I'm really liking how that looks right now. It's so fun. And like I said before, it looks like a hot mess, but when it all, it all starts to come together, look at that. Isn't it gorgeous how all the blues just start pulling together? And I think I'd, I want to drip a little more of that blue down in here. And it's okay that it got on my flowers a little bit. I kind of think I like that a little. What do you guys think? And I'm just being sloppy and just having some fun and letting it drip. Okay, so here comes the fun part. Now let's do this. I'm going to take this alcohol ink. And remember, it's alcohol ink, so it's going to dry pretty fast. And I am going to just let this drip right down the edges. And I think this is really when it all started to come to life. Now you may be asking, why would she do all of that um, rubbing of that other color the the pit pen around the edges if she was just going to put this alcohol ink on the edges well the truth is you can still see the shadowing coming in from behind we're just covering up the harsh edge so we're giving it a depth of field how fun is this you guys having fun and we're using an awful lot of mediums here because we've gone from not just um, gelatos, which are water-based, to alcohol. Look at that. It's already, look at how much it's coming to life, okay? So there's that. And then the next thing I want to do is come back and add a little bit of gold. So again, I'm going to put the gold on my palette because if I were to just start dropping it, it would get super messy quick, okay? And, I, and I'm just going to blot it around. Again, on my flowers, I, I don't care. I really kind of want to pick some of that color up onto my flowers. On my butterfly, um, I'm going to kind of encourage some of it from up here. Maybe put a little bit more on my frame. It's all about building texture and depth. And you see, like, if I'm not liking that, but that's okay. Let it go, let it go. Look at how pretty that is. And see, you can really see the fruit of the spirits in there. And you see all that texture up at the top. And we're so not even done yet. We're so not even done. Okay, so now I'm going to take a little bit of black. Now, this is just regular old black paint. If you had, if you had black, um, you know, a dauber that you could you could splatter you could definitely um, do that um, but I'm just gonna put a little bit of black ink right there not a lot just a little and I'm gonna take the alcohol because it'll help it dry a little bit faster I'm gonna take this alcohol and I'm gonna saturate it up now I may have to add a little more pigment because we're diluting it as we're doing that so you know but I need it to be good and wet and I'm gonna grab my fan brush real fast and one thing I do want to do is I'm going to cover up, I'm going to cover up my saying on the center in here because I don't want these splatters to be on that. I really just want the splatters to be around the perimeter. So I'm going to take this fan brush, I'm going to pick up some of this paint here. Um, and then I've got my, my little coffee filters here. I'm just going to fold them in. Because I really want to cover up my saying. I don't want anything on that. 
I don't care if it gets on the frame so much, but I don't want my saying to get covered up. Okay. I'll just put that there like that. Okay. Now, one thing I do want to do is I'm going to touch the edge of this, of this. So now I have almost three layers going on here on the sides. But because I'm using a fan brush, see how irregular it is? Look at how that little bit of darkness compared to over here just sort of brings it all, brings your eye right back to the top. Isn't that cool? Try not to touch my, my leaf there. You guys having fun tonight? And don't worry about that hanging off the edge there. I can fix that later. Look at how fun that is. Sorry guys, I got out of frame a little bit, but I had to see what I was doing. Okay, I think we're about done. And now only thing left to do is it's not complete without a few splatters, right? So what I'm going to do is put a little bit more of this black down here. It's about to splatter for real this time. Where's that pin? Um, these, these containers are those Wilton cake containers. I just filled them with paint, with black acrylic paint, um, a, a liquid paint, like a craft paint. So I'm going to get this good and saturated. And this is where the splatters come. Okay, now I've got my cover, I've got the thing covered up. And what you're going to do is you're going to hit the, to the top of your hand. So you're going to put your hand down and pop up. And then that's going to splatter. See, it's going to add your splatters. And I really want just a few right over here in my flower. Oh, I didn't want to do that. Just subtle splatters. I need a little more alcoholy goodness, wetness here. Some. Okay, now. See how we got we got some right there. Let's put a little more right there. Maybe a little more over here. This is where I'm going to get a little selective with where my little splatters go. Just because I'm missing some here and there. How fun is this? And there we go. A completed tag. The only thing left to do is once this is completely dry, I usually paint the back with black gesso or white gesso. And um, I'm going to set one of these little eyelets in here. I have one over here. Um, these are the We Are Memory Keepers large eyelets. Um, I like to do this after I've painted the back, but for you guys, I'm going to go ahead and show you what it looks like because I just think it really adds something to it. I'll try not to, I mean it's still wet. I should probably let it dry a minute first. <coughs> Alcohol, whoo! Oh my goodness. Okay, so there's that. And then um, for the setting, which one is it? I always get it confused. I always have to look it up. It's a 1 and I think it's A. 1 and A. And then you want to put, see this is where I always get it backwards. I think it goes this way. The large pokey in and the top. And then the 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 stunted side that, that I guess what is that um, 
that is side one goes to the back so that it spreads the little guys open so there we go and then all we need now is to add a little bit of fiber in our in our charm and again I'm gonna let this dry really good before I go adding the charm so does anybody have any questions did you enjoy it um, I still think I need a little tiny bit more gold up here so my solution to that is I'm just gonna take it and put it on my finger kind of blot it off and then just kind of splash it around like a rub and buff kind of thing and it's really gonna pick up the texture of this um, all this goodness back here and then I can take I think I've, I need a little more of Lamore stamping on here because I've covered some of that up so I'm gonna take my darker pen and come back and this is just what I do guys I just piddle until I like it do you guys do this just piddle look at that This is Liquitex uh, Professional Acrylic Ink Iridescent Bright Gold. There will be a complete supply list on the blog post that accompanies this tomorrow or the next day. I'm going to try and get it up tomorrow, but I have a pretty busy day. So I'm going to do my best to put all of the links to all of the products used in the blog post that goes with this. So who wants to win one of these tags? I have two of them here. Who wants to win one? Nice hands. Oh, these are so fun. Look at this. Inky fun fingers. Manicures no longer needed. <laughs> you want to win one? Okay, well, I tell you what. Um, let's do this. Okay, the pink was the pink was um, alcohol ink shell pink. shell pink and I also use and like I said I will put a complete blog post listing down below or in the in the video um, so this is the patina set from Ranger these this is the vintage um, alcohol inks that set there's think there's three colors in the set this is the jade and then the blue which is uh Verdigris, Verdigris, it's Verdigris. So those are the three alcohol inks that we use tonight. And then as far as the pit pens go, we use the um, Cold Gray 233 and the Cold Gray 235. We use Lemur Weber's uh, Circles. These are Lemur Circles by Indigo Blue. Check your local retailers. They're about to hit the market any day now. And the um Lemore will have these in her store i know simon says stamp already has them and um the gelatos we used the um snow cone uh red cherry and bubble gum and green tea so these are the gelatos that we used Gesso, Whip Spackle, Gel Medium, Lindy Stamp Gang, I used uh, Creme Brulee. And then just black acrylic paint. And then just whatever flowers and brads you have in your stash. This is a Studio Calico Butterfly over here. Okay, so this is how you can win one of these tags, okay? Um... I have two of them so I will give one away right now I'm gonna write down a number and you guys guess and the first one who guesses um, I'm gonna write it down okay so I wrote it down it's right here 
Okay, so the first person who guesses the number gets the tag. Ready, set, go. And my my um chat froze up. Keep guessing. Lower. Y'all are so close. Y'all are all over the place. Keep guessing. Come on. Below. Okay. Below 15. Below 15. Yep. That's it. Scrapbooking. Scrap, scrapbooking 3. Got it. Scrapbooking 3. Stop. 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 Scrapbooking 3. The number was 4. Scrapbooking Yay! Okay, so now let's do another one because I have two. I can give away two. So for the other tag, what we'll do is on the video for this, the recording, we'll do a giveaway for those who get to watch the recording. How's that? So um, I will put the details for the contest on my blog. So you have to be a follower of my blog and when you watch the recording, leave a comment on my YouTube or my blog, and I'll do a random um, pick from that to win this. So if you want to win this and you're watching the recording, leave. you have to be a follower of my blog, a follower of my YouTube channel, and then I will uh, leave a comment on the video, and I will um, pick a random winner one day next week. How's that? And I'll give everybody a chance to watch. Because I have a lot of international buddies that can't be here live. Okay, so scrapbooking three, send me your, if you, are you friends with me on Facebook? Send me your, in a private message, your address, and I'll mail this to you. Um, we'll say next week. Let's say, how about on um, the 10th of February, that gives you one week. The 10th of February is my anniversary, so we'll do it that day. We'll, we'll pick a winner that day. Thank you guys so much for coming out and hanging out with me tonight. I really appreciate your support. Um, our next Ustream is going to be set for, what is it, March the 2nd. So, um, thank you. <laughs> um, March the 2nd. So, um... I hope you guys can join us. Also... I can't do it in February because I'm just really overbooked right now. But I want to try and do a Ustream on Saturday. Are you guys up for a Saturday Ustream? Leave me that information in the comments as well. Because I really want to do a Saturday Ustream for my international peeps. I've been getting um, emails from them saying, please, please do it again. So um, I think at 11 o'clock... Um, Eastern Standard Time on a Saturday would be a good time for my international peeps. So thank you, Beatrice, for coming. Um, scrapbooking 3, send me your address in Facebook, and I will send this out to you, along with maybe some other goodies. I'm de-stashing my room, so you may get some other stuff too. <laughs> so you guys, leave me some feedback on the video for this uh, you, this Ustream, letting me know what, what's good. Um, make a canvas. Um, this would have been a beautiful canvas, wouldn't it? So here's the tag. And there will be a blog post posted sometime tomorrow that will have the video recording for you guys and all of the list of supplies that we used. Look at that. Isn't it gorgeous? Love these stamps. I just absolutely love them. So thank you guys all for hanging out with me tonight, and I will um, talk to you on the flip.